Hi guys, welcome to another painting process video of mine. This is actually the first video of a two-part series. So in this one, I will show you how I painted the petals of this deep magenta red peony. As you know, peony is a very popular flower to paint. Since they are not grown here in Malaysia, my country, I'm using this photo sourced from the stock photo website Unsplash. If you are interested to use this image for practice, you can check out the link to the original photo in the video description below. As you can see here on the desk, I already have the flower drawing traced onto my watercolor paper. So without further ado, let's dive in. The two main colors that I'm using for the petals are Permanent Rose and Quinacridone Magenta. This one that I'm applying is Quinacridone Magenta. Painting the first petal is like a, a test or experiment where I try to figure out the best way for me to approach this particular piece of artwork before I continue to work on the rest. I'll definitely go over them a few rounds, adding multiple layers to achieve the intensity and tones that I'm looking for. I'm lifting up some paint here in order to leave some shine on the petal as based on what I see in the reference photo. Now I'm mixing up a purple color using a tiny amount of indigo and magenta. Now picking up some permanent rows. And apply it to areas where the tone is darker. And then I blend it out with the damp brush. This is actually my favorite technique in watercolor painting. So this round of application can be considered my first layer, where I apply the base colors and create basic tones and shines on the petals. And I will do the same for all the petals, moving from the left side to the right. Uh, let's say if you currently don't have quinacridone magenta in your watercolor paint collection, uh, it's okay to use only permanent rose. In fact, you can use a different red if you like. By the way, if you wish to have a copy of this flower drawing, you can download it from my subscriber-only template library. I will leave the subscribe link in the description below. While this is considered the first layer, I will actually add on more paint or enhance certain areas immediately if I think it's better to do it now, mm, as this will give me a better overall guide on the shades and tones when I apply the second layer later. Oh. 
What I'm doing now is using simple wet on wet technique to darken the edges of this petal. By the way, the brushes that I'm using here are the red dot spotters from Rosemary & Co. I have them in sizes from 6 to 2 zero. So I'm continuing to add uh, preliminary shades to the petals. Even though it's the first round of application, I would like to build up the form of the flower, the depth of the petals, as much as I could. At this point of time, I would also actually mix the paint to get slightly different shades of magenta, sometimes with a bit more of permanent rose, sometimes a bit more of quinacridone magenta. For the darker areas, such as along the narrow spaces between the petals and shadowed areas behind the petal, again I'm using a purple mixed by using indigo and magenta. Now, this particular petal has many folds, so to create the effect, I first applied paint on the darker areas to kind of carve out where the folds are. Then I blend it with the damp brush. You probably can see by now that I really love to use this technique in my painting simply because um, it's so useful and easy to apply. For this petal, I started by applying purple at the bottom darker area and as I moved up, I then added the magenta. The colors blended nicely because uh, the area was still wet, so you get a nice gradient effect from dark to bright. So these were basically the steps that I used to apply the first layer to all the petals, creating shades and forms as I go.
Here again, I have to create uh, the appearance of folds on the petal, so I started painting the darker areas first. When all the petals have been covered with paint, I felt that certain areas were a bit dull compared to what I saw in the reference photo. So here I'm applying a gentle wash or glaze of permanent rose over those areas again. If you're doing this, uh, remember to only do it when the previous layer is already dry, and also to keep your brush stroke gentle and light. I hope you can see the difference after the wash is applied. Next, uh, it's time to get the darkest areas to be really dark and also to warm up the tone of the flower in general. So here I'm introducing another color to the palette which is Alizarin Crimson. Uh, it's a warmer and deeper red and mixing it with indigo will give a very deep purple as well. And if you refer to the photo, you will see that the dark purple is mainly located around the center of the flower. This will be considered as my second layer and this is the stage where the main focus is about making the shades and shadows stand out. The techniques are still basically the same but the paint that I applied now is thicker or less diluted. At this point of time, I noticed that there are areas where the colors are more saturated than they should be. So I'm lightening up those areas by using the lifting technique. Basically, it's just kind of sweeping the area with a damp brush and then pressing a paper towel on the area to pick up the pigment. So back to adding darker and warmer red shades to the petals. I also want to continue further at depth and define the edges of the petals.
While I'm enhancing the shades, I'm also now starting to add texture to the petals. To make it simple, I just painted fine short strokes using very little paint on the brush. As for the color, I use a, a slightly darker shade than the color that's already on the petal. Finally, I'm putting down a light wash or glaze using another color, which is one of my favorite colors, Opera Pink. Again, this was based on the reference photo, where I could see a bright pink tone uh, present on some areas. But you might not see or interpret the colors like I did. So when it comes to painting realistic flower illustrations, I would say uh, paint what you see, paint what you observe. <laughs> If you like what you are watching, don't forget to like this video or leave a comment. The leaf painting process video will be in part 2 of this series. So do subscribe to my channel to get notification when the video is published. So the work on the petals is done. I will see you guys in part 2. Bye!